Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku bringing you a grand solar minimum update Friday, February 26th, around 10 p.m. Mountain Time 2021. Northern Hemisphere snow mass jumps to 700 gigatons above the 1982 2012 average. Holy macaroni, but the big story natural gas price shocks will be felt in Minnesota as well as the rest of the U.S. Keep calm, it's boom time. Reports warn Texas wasn't ready for cold weather 10 years ago as five, yes, five of the people on the board of directors resigned from ERCOT after the uh, debacle that happened in Texas, the nexus of the Schmexis. More to come as Missouri Department of Conservation. Cold weather to blame for fewer bluebirds and bluebird decimation. The cold, not the heat. It's not global warming. It's not you. It's not CO2. It's the sun. Let's check the models. Looking pretty spring tactic as the March Madness is ending. But here's your Saturday. Here's your weekend. Heavy snow in the northwest in the mountainous regions as a storm system moves through uh, Minnesota and Iowa there. Say it ain't soda. Wisconsin picking up a little bit. Uh, Michigan and the Northeast will be picking up a little bit as the second system moves into the West. Brings snow all the way down to the Southern Sierras, as well as Arizona, picking up some much needed moisture in the Four Corners region as we enter March. Hello. Multi day heavy rain in Mid South. Strong winds and lingering snow in the West. Several bands of heavy rain may cause flash flooding. Holy mackerel. Boom, we're back. Several bands of heavy rain may cause flash flooding in the Mid-South. A post potent storm will bring heavy winds and critical fire weather threats in the Southwest. A damaging Santa Ana winds to the Southern California region. The, these brown regions are heavy uh, wind, pink snow warnings and watches through the purple High winds here in Texas, the nexus of the Schmexis, Colorado, and New Mexico. And here's that flooding risk. Hello. Heavy mountain snow will linger across the north and central Rockies and the intermontane west. A winter mix is also possible in the Appalachians and portions of the northeast here and here. But we're watching on these the, the snow to melt out and potentially flooding Tennessee, Kentucky, looking plucky, West Virginia. It's a sinny. Who knew? I did. Didn't we just? Anyway, where are we? Holy macaroni. I can't even. Monster Arctic front engulfs Asia and Canada as Europe's longest bridge is closed due to snow. Did I just say Europe's longest bridge is closed due to snow? I thought we would never see snow. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. I let him come out today. It was so nice out. While parts of the United States and Europe enjoy a brief respite from the frostbite, the majority of Canada, transcontinental Russia, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, and all the stands continue to suffer from the nexus of the Shmexis, which is Texas. Yes, the cold front in Texas is now in Turkmenistan, descended from the Arctic as it made a whirlwind around due to climate change. Siberia is suffering one of its coldest winters on record, with temperatures in the vast northern Asian region having regularly dipped below minus 50 degrees C. Hello, since mid-December. That's minus 60 Fahrenheit, for fuck's sake. Much of Central and Western Asia has been battling brutal and unusual freezes over the past few months, which in turn have led to food and energy prices soaring to record highs, like what's happening in Minnesota. Say it ain't soda. The latest GFS 2-meter temperature anomaly run shows. As for February 25th, well, yeah, there's not a lot of cold regions, except everywhere is cold. <laughs> so it's cold outside. Northern Hemisphere snow mass jumps to 700 gigatons above the 82 to 2012 average. Arctic sea ice sees exponential gains and Iceland volcano stirs. I couldn't have said it better, Cap Allon over at Electroverse. Global cryosphere is showing that spike in Northern Hemisphere snow mass above the multi-decadal averages going back to 1982. This is more snow we've seen in 50 years on the planet. Hello.
Are you picking it up? We put it down. Exponential black line is where you live. In the last three weeks, eclipsing 2018, 2017, 2020. Uh, it's not even funny. 2021. Yes, epic snow ice extent and thickness is increasing. So we have increased volume here. The biggest volume in half a decade and increasing in the upward trend. Germany registers the greatest temperature change since records began. This is the up and down change from day to night in one region here in Gothenburg City on February 14th. After seven days, the high was 18.1 C, 64 of 6 Fahrenheit. The low, minus 23.8, a difference of a shit ton. The previous record was set in the area in May 1880 as the early days of weather wrecking kept that time temperature increase of 41 C. 73.48 Fahrenheit was recorded within the seven days. That's pretty arbitrary for the watchers, by the way. So they're just cherry picking shit. But it's cold in Germany. Seismic update. Plenty of quakes to note, including Iceland and still the big uptick happening. We're waiting for a uh, volcanic eruption from the mid-ocean ridge any day soon. Latest Earth. It's the last headline you uh -oh. want to see in the midst of the COVID economy. The Shut up. Yeah. Latest earthquakes in or near Iceland today in the past 24 hours have increased 300 quakes in the last 24 hours. Yesterday, there were 685 quakes recorded on the island today during the past 24 hours. It was shaken by 11 quakes of magnitude four or above. 11 for magnitude or above. Did you see that on the USGS? I didn't. I saw one quake today. But in fact, there were 11 quakes for magnitude or greater. 43 quakes between three and four magnitude. That would be a total of 45 quakes that the USGS should have on their map on Iceland. Do you know how, do you know how many they have? Two. What say you? Definitely the disinformation campaign is on. They don't want you to know what's happening in Iceland. But if it erupts, they have to report on that. So why, why are they? I don't get it. Anyway. So, so far we have 54 quakes above magnitude three today, 54 quakes above mag three in Iceland today, 251 quakes between two and three magnitude, which all should be on the map, which would mean the USGS map should be showing over 400 quakes in Iceland above two magnitude. And they're showing two quakes. Now, let's add that to the 820 quakes below two magnitude, and we have over 1,100 quakes in Iceland today. Yes, sign of the times, and my prediction is coming true. I'm just reporting on the jigginess. Here we are over at icelandgeology.net, and the latest update, February 26th. Let's see if they put a new one up in the last few minutes since we started this, because it's that important. And we're one of the few people that are reporting on this uh, immediate time frame about the volcanism in Iceland, in the U.S., by the way. Here we are at the update, a short update at that. At 12.06 UTC, an earthquake with magnitude 4.4, followed by dozens of others. The earthquakes that are ringing around Iceland are making it impossible to determine what is actually going on. It's insane. Look at them. This is just the last 24 hours, hours of powers. It looks insane. Unusual amount of hydrogen volcanic gas has been detected in Svartensky for the last day. It's unclear why this change has happened. More research is needed to see what's going on here, but we call it uh, an ongoing volcanic event that's about to happen. This is the precursor to a major mid-ocean ridge fissure in the uh, island of Iceland. So... Heads up, it's happening, and we're reporting on it, thankfully. Explainer Mount Etna puts on its latest spectacular show. Paroxysm number eight is looking great. Take a look at these photos. And the next paroxysm number nine is happening now while I bloviate, which is why I brought the live streams up. So we're, real quick, Worldwide Volcano News Update, let's check the data, which is not Schmeda. 14,000 feet, Raventador du Cono to about 7,000, nothing special there. 13,000 feet, to Pacaya blasting off Suanos Hima, puffing and passing to some distance. Fuego, Popo, Ibico, say it ain't so. Etna, 
if the amazing regular current activity continues. A new lava fountaining episode known as a paroxysm is likely to occur while diamond bloviates and expected by many during the fortnight, which is now. Be sure to watch various webcams that we have up now. Boom! And it seems to be a dud, like mud. It seems to be that Aetna has called it quits. And I'm looking at all of the webcams, and these are not schmapers. These are facts. Aetna has gone quiet. Blaming a wiggly jet stream on climate change. Not so fast. Now, this is interesting because actual climatologists that are shills are actually defending our position. It's amazing. They say, whoa, 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 whoa. The, the meridional flow happens every 10 years. We don't know why, but there's this guy called Diamond uh, on, at the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and a few other people that are claiming that the sun may have something to do with the breakdown of the jet stream. And it's not you. I mean, there, it, there may be something else going on, says them. <laughs> now, the CIA releases 13 million pages of declassified documents about UFOs. Let me repeat that. The CIA has released... Now, we told you a month ago they released an early dump that was like 2,300 pages. This is 13 million pages of declassified documents that will take you the next 400 lifetimes to review. So there's that. Venetian blue beads found in Alaska that predate Columbus by hundreds of years. Now they found these beads up in Alaska that date back to about 14, I don't know. But it's hundreds of years before Columbus. Who can suck it? Because he's a scumbag that raped people and just took shit. So fuck him. Petrified tree up to 20 million years old found intact in Lesbos without any rapes or anything like Columbus did. No, they actually spent hours and thousands of hours. Multicultural people actually dug this out. Can you imagine that? All races. <laughs> and no one was raped or anyway. No one got smallpox. So that's a good thing. A major ocean current may be hurtling towards collapse. The AMOC, the Gulf Stream, your future, your survivability in North America and Europe may be about to shut down. Downtown Leroy Brown. Now, I have been a geologist for now going on approaching four decades, but we're just at three plus decades. So... <clears throat> and I've only been alive for five decades as of next year. So there's that. Most of my life I've been a geologist and I've been researching geological themes, especially those that are not mainstream, including the one that we're not taught. We're taught gradualism, but I've been researching catastrophism for three plus decades, almost longer than any geologist on the planet that is willing to admit to it. I'm one of the few. And what we have known since the 90s, since I went into academia, this is not new, is that the AMOC shuts down periodically every few thousand years. The most recent shutdown was 8,600 years ago when a huge outwash of fresh water hit the North Atlantic, caused the AMOC, the Gulf Stream, to shut down. And, well, it wasn't a pretty picture. In Europe, it froze for hundreds of years. It was a mini ice age extraordinaire. And we're now talking about the most recent mini ice age. And we claim it's caused by a grand solar minimum, the shutdown of the sun. The sun controls everything on planet Earth. There may be a several hundred year lag time due to ocean currents and catch up. But you're living the climate catastrophe that is time immemorial called the flexure point of glaciation. This is the time when glaciers build, the time you're living now and the end of the interglacial. It, it's also happening to be kicked off by the next grand solar minimum and the magnetic reversal, which, in my opinion, is the explanation for the kickoff of the end of all interglacials in recent times. So and I, I'm, I'm swooning 
because the answers that I never had as a graduate student 30 years ago are coming to fruition based on my research. And it's just fantastic to finally understand the mechanism to what we've been describing. Well, it has been described, in fact, here in this paper, February 25th, 2021, the Gulf Stream system at its weakest in a millennia. This is coming out yesterday, and they are right on the money, except they say climate change, so I don't like that. <clears throat> now, if you want to see an amazing expose on it, check out the Gulf Stream AMOC hurtling towards collapse over at Magnetic Reversal News. The channel's been up for two years now. Support the channel, subscribe to it, watch the video, and share it on your social media for fuck's sake. Non-Science Returns by Brian J. Ford. Now, this book, Non-Science Returns, the original dates from 1971, and it caused a sensation. Remember? It was the, remember Leonard Nimoy's coming ice age? I do. I was a young child, and I gobbled it all up in my brain. Well, it was translated and f featured on television, widely reviewed, and it celebrates the 15th birthday and is republished with an update by Brian J. Ford, who's going to be coming on the channel. So, upcoming interviews, Brian J. Ford, Non-Science Returns, Micah T. Dank, Into the Rabbit Hole, March 8th, and we're going to get a couple of these Australians in here to tell us about the real brass tacks about science and climate, for fuck's sake. We've been lied to for far too long, and I'm sick of it. Are you? Oh, and if you're looking for investment advice, I won't be giving it to you, but someone told me that on the dropdown on crypto, which is right now, you should probably get in. So if you're looking for a time to get in on Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency, it's right now. And someone told me that, I didn't tell you. And that's a boom to role playing and knowledge. Who do you believe? The mainstream media? Diamond, a multidisciplinary climatologist that got a full scholarship for his graduate degree, or the mainstream media? Well, I have over 30 years of experience past that fact researching the topics, and I've been right about most things most of the times. In fact, if you think of one thing I've been wrong about, please comment below. I'd love to hear about it. Proper prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. And if you're planning, well, we're not scamming. Share this video with like-minded people. Thanks to all our one-time donors, our Patreons. Anyone that shares this video is a hero in my eyes. Leah, Alien Allen, and Gremlin all send their regards, and we love you. Be safe. That's a boom to knowledge, to community, and to preparedness. Be safe. Click on one of the other boxes to gain more knowledge and to stick your foot up the asses of those. <whistles> yep, we know what we're talking about. That's a boom. Lovin's. No, 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 no.